come to order. Please join in this pledge of allegiance.
Calvary Park, as usual, is in good shape. Just used a lot during the winter. And uh, we're just some, uh, a couple of things happened there. There's some new treadmills being in place soon at the end. No concern for tennis courts. And there is a spring that's gone on April 18th. It relates to La Loma Park. It's looking a lot better. It's good. About 15 kids were out there playing softball. The last time I uh, was out there. And lots of walking on the trails to keep that good weather. Fun ring. I went out there and it looks like this could be the best months that we've had ever, just based on the classes that we have. And there's people out there that decided that it didn't matter how cold it was or anything it was, just so wonderful. So, Blowing Springs, we didn't have to work with it because some of the options were still. Canyon Creek wants to get ready for any people. Uh, out there, like Gavron the Beach, our is still closed. There's a couple of things going on with the bridge that they put in. But that was just some idea of the skin. As far as that feels, it's in good condition. And it was about 24 months ago, about 19 years ago, when we first got to do this before. But in parks, in good shape. New business, March 7th is the next meet and greet. Uh, as of the time that we had our meeting, there was 24 people that already signed up. I'm not quite sure how big that's going to be, but I'm here to be attended by our usual. Uh, we talked about some of the capital projects and got some information relative to the fact that those are all tabled. And we might need to revisit them again at some point. If that was hard to read, that was a the ball for us when we were We had a conversation about silver speakers and silver fit, just to make sure that we were clear and we speak to that. Joe did a great job of giving us information on that. And we received a historic cyber class that felt like Mr. Country Club. We went and we looked into put the country club in a historical site. And that's really the process of what's like in Africa to the marketing department. And I think in August we will have another visit. And it may very well be in the historical. Goes to, it goes to the board in uh, August, uh, and they would vote on it at that time. Um, what significance is that? It, well, keep in mind that uh, uh, Country Club was designed by E. Bay Jones, who founded the uh, uh, University of Arkansas. Gold In our next meeting. 4 p.m. Monday, March 9th. So, anybody would like to come join us, we much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Next up is Paul Jason. Thanks, Lloyd, Chair of the Golf Committee. Um, our February 12th recap, real quick. Off round, our revenue was uh, down last year, uh, total year. Really not a bad year, uh, considering all the days we were, we were closed due to flooding. We were down uh, 153 on 19. Uh, golf rounds were off about 6,200 again weather last year. We had 90 inches of rain, as we talked about, at Highlands of last year, and the normals over 40. So a lot of days off. Uh, great news that January's rounds were up 100, uh, 213. Had uh, great weather, and uh, let's just continue to pray for uh, Good weather through the spring, and it's also a national trend that uh, same golf rounds increase uh, in 2020. Uh, we had visitors also, uh, as, as Gary mentioned, John uh, was at our, our this month's meeting. Janice has been, uh, Sims has been at one of our meetings, <coughs> asked the other candidates to join us. Charlie Teal was there for the Bell Vista Foundation to discuss the 2020 Cooper Community Charity Classic. Uh, that's going to be at the Country Club in June. This is a VT tour event that we've hosted the last few years. Uh, last year, the foundation gave $30,000 in grants, <coughs> excuse me, to five, uh, five local charities, Boys and, Girl, Boys and Girls Club of Wind County, Bella Vista Courtesy Van, Bella Vista Animal Shelter, Bella Vista Sunshine Rotary, and the Village House for Sea Grants. If you would like to get involved in that event, please contact Charlie. As recently published, the Nine Golden Snow in this first summer, uh, we'll be reopening in the spring, starting the 1st of April, uh, barring any more flooding. Hopefully we won't get it this year. And there will be some rerouting due to the bridge removal, and we'll be 
we had adjusted TTAP on that. So look to the website and we can go for update for more information on that. Uh, a couple more things real quick. As mentioned last month, uh, we've adjusted our meeting format a little bit. And last month's main topic was I just continue to increase rounds. There were some great ideas that were discussed and uh, we're looking forward to implementing continue to promote golf uh, and goals. It's that time of year that we're looking for, as all committees are looking for members, if anybody wants to join the golf committee, we uh, encourage you to go to the website, fill out the application, and uh, we'll go through that whole process, and all the other committees will be looking for people. No, for dates, uh, March 5th, 10th is the Golf Expo here at Reardon, Golf Fest, April 11th at Tanger, and our next meeting is March 11th at 8 30. Yes, sir. Will the uh, a APT tournament be uh, a McClarty Daniel tournament this year? Is Cooper bowed out? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure on that. I think uh, Charlie I mentioned oh, that. Charlie's here or not? Yeah. yeah. See. He mentioned that in a meeting that he had a meeting with Cooper and right after McClarty Daniel has stepped up to the plate this year. So good. That anyway, we've got a title spot. So good. That's good. Yeah, they're looking at raising a lot of like 40000 they're going to pick five more foundations to build this. Anything else? Thanks, Jason. Yep. Uh, next up, Community Involvement Committee. Nothing from them? Okay. Next item, financial reports. All right, uh, we weren't sure how many people were going to attend today's meeting. Uh, we made 50 copies. It looks like we still have some more, but if anybody uh, is watching live stream, watching, uh, they can contact Tammy uh, at this email address and she'll send you the entire 170 page packet of today's meeting. Uh, we're going to briefly go over the financials because it is January uh, and it's the first month of the year. So we're going to start with the POA. You'll see that our gross profit is down a little bit. Uh, while assessments are up, uh, golf is down. What's, what we think is occurring is a lot of our golfers are delaying getting their membership until March 1 when the new fee schedule kicks in. So uh, while Jason from the Golf Committee referenced our rounds are up, which is great, but our memberships are down, but it's a delay right now. On the expense side, you'll see that we're doing fairly well. Uh, the salaries are, uh, are across all divisions. That's the $71,000 savings, uh, some support contracts, repairs and maintenance, and professional fees. So the team is doing a good job in, in uh, conserving expenses. And you'll see that the EBITDA for January, and it's just the first month of the year, is $56,000 to the positive. And then on to the water utility, uh, you'll see that our revenue is actually up by $56,000, uh, and that's water usage, mainly additional homes. As the, as the community adds homes, there's more users. Uh, expenses, uh, they were just a little bit over uh, expenses on, uh, compared to budget, uh, mainly the annual software budget. Uh, so the EBITDA was uh, better by $28,000, so it's a nice way to start the year where both uh, the POA and the water department are better than the budget. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a uh, motion. And after many meetings that we've had regarding the necessity to do a revised budget this year, based on some things we found out in December and January and, and November, uh, namely bridges at golf courses, it uh, affected the failed budget and then also the uh, past budget was approved January 16th. And so because of that, I would move that we approve the 2000 revised operating capital and simple cash flow budgets, replacing the failed budget that we had implemented for all of the, this year, uh, which were approved in the bedroom. Jim, if you could, that's uh, later on in the agenda uh, to uh, 
crudely revised, and I have a presentation. You were at uh, last week's meeting. Yes. Um, and, and we're going to be uh, using the exact same presentation since we have a lot of people that haven't seen that. Uh, I'll make the motion then. Fantastic. Uh, uh, next item uh, listed on the program, you see that open forum comments and questions that came in. I want to assure you that we do take comments and questions seriously and uh, we do consider what our property owners say. Next item will be the open forum. The first, I have John Kennett. Yes, sir. State the, please just state the street that you live on. Uh, three weapons. Right. Uh, I'm just here on the yard. It's like 16 inches. And uh, I ride a bike. That's one of the reasons the wife and I moved over here. And, and uh, it's a good thing. It's good physical activity. Ask a doctor. Willing to and I get out there and I uh, clean the trails as well. And to me, that's uh, almost as much fun as riding a bike. They're taking a hike. And I, I've done some of that this year. I've got to be out and do some more. But my, my uh, just is that it's a good activity to bike. And you've got somebody that's uh, the Walton Foundation, I believe, that's putting up the uh, majority of the money that is required to make the trails. And uh, that's great. But that's basically all I got to say. I mean, well, when I was a young person, I started biking about 13 years ago, and uh, but I was a smoker, and the two don't go well together. And I asked the doctor about that, and he <laughs> hopefully he can tell me something I'd like to hear. But uh, he. Gave me a car, it's SOS, and about smoke. Yeah, it took me a while, like about a year, but I, and I like to ride them. And uh, uh, my lungs are really uh, I was lucky not to get any complications, so I, it was enough motivation for me to stop smoking. I haven't been smoking for 13 years, and I, one of the reasons, the primary reasons, probably maybe I'll do Thank you. Congratulations on being a non-smoker. I myself am a former smoker. So I understand what's involved. And thank you for your efforts to keep the trails clean. Thank you very much. Next up is Jan Meyer. Hi, good evening. My name is Jan Marie Meyer, 71 Merritt Drive. Um, I just want to talk a little bit. Um, I have always been for the walkway that we had talked about, I believe it was last spring, uh, for the connector between Walton Springs and um, the Methville Park. And I, I really, my only greatest concern about it was the privacy and preservation of the trees behind our property. Um, walkway along with the soft rail run directly behind our property and the trees I'm speaking about act as a natural privacy curtain and a noise barrier from the traffic off of Houston Road. Um, I understand and I love the trails but the idea of a walk path which I have been for but a 10 foot wide concrete walkway is entirely different animal. And I just wanted to see how many trees will be lost in the construction of this. Um, and I know there's a great deal of unknowns of what's going to happen. But a lot of the residences on Merritt Drive, Murrow Lane, and Merritt Circle will directly be impacted by this project. And we just feel that um, with all due consideration since the initial meeting of the input, um, that this will affect all the residents of the streets I manage. And it's personal to us because it involves our property with my family, and it encroaches, uh, and encroaches, excuse me, on 
out of privacy directly. And I just want to see, so I would like to meet with you as well, to see, and I understand that maybe after the construction you would put up more plants and shrubs, and we appreciate that greatly. Um, the one reason I moved here is all the pine trees that line most of the roads. They're along the road. And I would hate to lose those because those take years to grow back up. And they do act as a natural curtain uh, for the noise and our privacy. So I would like to take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Jan? Sorry. I think you'll, you, you will get an answer to some of your concerns uh, at the end. Yeah. Um, we, we do have an answer for that. Thank you. Good news. Next one up is Mike, and I apologize. No, I can't that, that's okay. I'm going to wait for the recreation committee um, to voice any concerns. Uh, this this is the time right now. Ken Pink said he wasn't going to be here, so I thought I'd talk just a bit about pickball. Um, we have 92 people in the pickball email. Group right now, we have a, a, a ladder turn starting up uh, in March with uh, 24 days that are signed up. Uh, normally, we play outside Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, most people don't play on Saturday or Thursday. Right now. The uh, they have ordered new nets thanks to Joan uh, talked to her and she said that they would order new nets for that. That was uh, the fourth day to be resurfaced, and she said that she'd be paying attention to that and want to make sure that. It's on the agenda. Um, currently, currently inside, most of our people play um, almost every week. If it's outside, we play, you know, um, we'll play over a method. But it has to be above about 45 degrees for most people when you get out there to play. It's not like golf or we'll play in time and sunshine. Um, I'm one of those guys too. But uh, we play a lot in, in uh, Rogers. We play at the uh, uh, Del Bonas Center uh, where we've got three boards to play on three courts at the RAC, which is at the Activity Center. And then the Boys and Girls Club here in Bella Vista, uh, there's a lot of people who play with there. So again, just wanted to address the, uh, the, the court surface. I know that we tabled any new courts on last start for this year, and I, I certainly understand budget concerns, but wanted to, uh, to lay that out there for the rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one more schedule. Brent, I'm sorry, I Perfect. Hello, I'm Brent Steinsmer at the Lake Lane. And uh, I sent you an email expressing uh, my sentiments and rationale for why I support the Metro Connector. And I'd just like to reiterate some of those points. It really falls down, I think, to three essential elements. Uh, number one, topography. Number two, connectivity. Number three, usability. Topography, I think, seems pretty straightforward. There aren't a lot of areas in Bella Vista that are flat and suitable for a, a solid surface trail such as this. For uh, connectivity, obviously, the next two very desirable parks that we have in Bella Vista. Uh, but it doesn't just stop there. It's obviously connected to the Greenway, which opens up many more trunk mail miles of trial and trail. Trail to go much further. Uh, and then the last piece is the usability. That obviously there's a lot of people that don't want just a uh, one type of trail to use, and we have a lot of people that I think would benefit from a trail that is open to everybody that would possibly want to get out on the trail there. So uh, it would be a great service to the membership to provide a trail such as this that connects uh, all the strengths of the So thank you very much, and I'm going to hopefully hear a big yes vote. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'm Roger School, 19 Dalton Drive. I'm glad to see uh, and hear that you're going to open Birchdale in April. But I'm concerned about the statement of many maintenance. I believe that Birchdale is maintained like the other places. Uh, they'll generate four to five times the revenue that, that, that Britney would, would generate. So that's just the negative uh, to the golfers if we're going to do that. You know, now with the uh, assessment increase, maybe now's the time to 
think outside the box a little bit. You know, Birchdale actually could be a very good club of golf. Just the way it is now. You go through six, go across the bridge, where the restroom is, play the bar five down, the bar four back, and the bar three, and you go back across the bridge, play the bar and home, 10, 11, and 12. It'd be a perfect club hole golf Nicholas has been talking about that for years. They built a 13 hole golf course over in Branson. This would be a great four, uh, 12 hole golf course. Four par three, four par four, four par five. Wouldn't be a better than that. I'm just saying something to think about. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, if you still are concerned 
about not having enough trees in that area, contact me directly. I will put you in, in touch with the right people. Uh, they've been very good about installing trees and hedges and so forth to ensure that people have privacy. Also, in the back of uh, the room here, uh, on that square table by the one entrance, is the entire plan uh, on paper. It's about 40 plus pages long. It's not the easiest thing to go through, um, but uh, you're welcome to go take a look at that and uh, uh, see where your uh, where it's where it goes along the trail. Uh, regarding pickleballs, uh, pickleball courts, that was a very challenging discussion for the board. They really wanted to do more pickleball courts. Uh, they wanted to do more repairs to pickleball courts, and that was a really tough one uh, that they had to say, had to um, cut. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use the words of one of our board members when they said that the pickleball courts uh, and the uh, dog park and the archery would be potentially the first alternates that we would, uh, that the board would consider if we have a good year and it's looking strong, uh, they would be full first off. And so they fully recognize the importance of those projects. Uh, unfortunately, they had to make some budgetary uh, changes. Um, regarding uh, the minimally, minimally maintained uh, at Berksdale, I know this is that uh, Keith Eames, who was our uh, golf course superintendent, is just awesome. He does a fantastic job. So while we were going to maintain those courses, uh, that course at a lower level, I have a feeling you're not going to notice it uh, because he's really that good and he's going to do his best to, to make sure that it lives up to our standards. So I'm very optimistic. Uh, and then the last thing uh, regarding uh, uh, the weight, uh, the uh, regulations, the lake regulations that the, the board is considering tonight, I know that the board is still looking to talk about that. Uh, I've had conversations with two or three board members today alone, and they've had divergent opinions on it. So it's still a, a very uh, talked about and debated issue. Uh, but I can assure you this, is regardless of, of where the board lands, uh, the Lace Committee has committed to that this is not the end. This is one step in the process, and they're going to continue to re review this uh, if the policy that the regulation that is being presented today, if it goes through, uh, they committed that they're going to continue to review it on a regular basis to see if further changes need to be made. So I don't want to give anybody the impression that if it's voted in today, it, everything ends. And that was it. Okay, I have one item that uh, did take some additional research. Uh, we had an item that came up in several meetings had to do with uh, a member making the assertion that in our efforts to sell our inventory of EOA owned lots, we had inadvertently caused a loss of real estate taxes to the city by lowering the appraised value of all unimproved lots. At the time, I responded, I didn't believe that to be the case, but I did some further research. I sat down with the assessor. He explained the process to me. In a recurring cycle, all areas of the county are routinely reappraised. Bella Vista is scheduled for 2021. At that time, his appraisers will consider all sales during the previous 12 months. Sales considered to be out of the ordinary, normal course of business that sold your house and your son for $5. Those will not be included. Our sale of 348 lots in four days will be excluded by both parameters and therefore will not affect real estate taxes for the city of Bella Vista. Um, at this time, he told me that all unimproved lots in Bella Vista are appraised at a minimum $3,000. Now, after the reappraisal, notices are mailed to the property owners, and then there is a window of opportunity for appeal if you disagree with what they've come up with. So, in the fact that we've been selling these lots in the past 12 months, we have sold uh, about 340 lots from our inventory. 
resulting in an increase of about $10,000 a month in monthly assessment income to us. So I think that's a win for everybody. We got them out of our inventory and we've got people who wanted to own those lots. So that was my response to that. Um, I hope that David, I think you said uh, 340 would have actually sold 640. Did I say 340? Okay. 640. Well, 640. So, okay. Next, the revised budget.
and the three-month average of homes that were in good standing came out to 13,956. So we used 14,000. Now, as the number of homes get built, as more homes get built in our community, that number is going to have to go up. And we're going to have to reassess that. So every several months, we're going to have to go, OK, is it 14,000? Is that the right number? Is it 14,100 and 14,200 and so forth? So that's how we got to the uh, $840,000. So the first thing is we repositioned $412,000 from golf to assessments. So a lot of people have noted, notated that golf is subsidized to the tune of $2.2 million. So if we subsidize it 2.2 and we reposition $400,000 from golf to assessments, what's that going to do the, the subsidy? It's going to go from 2.2 to 2.6. So I don't want anybody to be surprised when they see that number at the end of this year. Okay. Similar with recreation. So recreation we're repositioning because of the fitness, annual fitness in the pool and the beach. And lakes because of boat registrations in general income because of the activity fees or the photo ID cards. We sell about 10,000 of those each year. And with a $6 decrease, that's how you get the math. So you'll see the total impact is $842,000. Next one, which is a much easier one. Okay. $2 will go towards the Trafalgar fire. And in the future, it'll go towards reserves, but right now we have to deal with the Trafalgar fire. That's $280,000, and we have legal fees of $280,000 in our budget. That's a pretty straightforward one. $4 will go towards operational costs and future financial capital improvements. That's $560,000. So right now, in the revised capital budget, we have $353,000 in capital projects. And it's in the packet that you have. It has a detail of every single, pro every single project we're looking at. Okay, remember the target is 560. So we revised the operating budget. We had to increase the number of non-capital projects by $62,000. We're going to have to buy more fitness equipment. Okay, with more people, we anticipate more people will buy the activity card. More people will use the gym facilities. So we're going to have to have more cardio equipment. Okay, that is a non-capital item. So that's included in the 62 additional picnic benches. The fish cleaning station was something that the lace committee has been talking about for some time. So forth. The operating budget also went up by 500. $579,000. That is compared to the fail budget, so it's a net increase. But I want to point out that the stump dump is included in there and the removal of the bridge. You could make an argument that, that should, I should not have included those two figures in the 579. So I called it out for you, showed it to you, and still the total dollar amount is $994,000, if you would deduct those two things, you would still be above the commitment, okay? But I wanted to make sure everybody, I was, wanted to be as transparent as possible on those two. One dollar will go, go towards rebuilding reserves, $140,000, and you'll see that in the simple, simple cash flow budget, we have $140,000. Okay, important considerations. If you look at our financials over a year period, we're very seasonal. We bring in more money during the summertime when a lot of people play golf, and we bring in less money in October, November, and so forth. So what, the reason I'm pointing this out is because since our expenditures and our revenue are not this straight line throughout the year, the contributions to the financial commitments will not necessarily be a straight line. Okay? So we'll probably contribute more during the summer and less during the off season and so forth. So I just want to make sure, so if anybody starts tracking on a specific basis on March and April and they go, wow, you're actually trending below, you're correct. And then we'll trend above in the summer months. What's most important is at the end of the year, we meet the financial obligation, okay? 
All right, so here's the simple cash flow. Lots of numbers, so we highlighted the numbers at the bottom, because that's what's most important. But you'll see on the very top, you have the income, you have the cost of sales, expenses, and so forth. And you'll see that we've included the new feature that we have on this new thing. You'll see the capital changes. Uh, and when it gets, and you'll see the water loan. Okay, now look at that water loan right there in the bottom, right there, the $280,000. Now I referenced earlier $280,000 with going towards the Trafalgar fire. There's two separate ones, two separate things. 280 to work the Trafalgar fire. It's in the operating budget. It's an expense. It's a legal expense. And then you have 280 that we're planning on paying back on the water loan. Okay, just coincidentally the same dollar amount. And you'll see that the simple cash flow eats by at four thousand dollars over budget, over break even. Here's the water utility. See, the water utility really doesn't change too much between the pass and the fail and the revised budget. Not much of a change there. And to recap what our goals were when we were talking about the revised budget is to revise it uh, based upon the assessment increase, up the, up the, uh, update the budget with current information, make sure the budget is lean, and most importantly, make sure we fulfill the financial commitments that were made to the membership in the 2020 plan. We have a motion to approve the budget. Um, I hate to be redundant, but I will uh, rephrase it. That I, I, I move that we approve the revised budget as submitted by management uh, tonight. Here. Second by Jerry. Second. Very hard. We've debated it a lot. Are we ready to vote? We are. Okay, I have Ruth's proxy on this. She stated that she would be voting in favor of this. So all in favor? Eight. All opposed? One opposed. The next item is the proposed amenity fee schedule. Right on page uh, 119 of your board packet, you will see the memo regarding the fee schedule. And on page 121, you will see a draft of the fee schedule. This is the tri fold that we hand out at member services. Uh, so there's two issues on this. First, and, and I want to make sure I don't confuse anybody. Uh, so first of all, we have the amenity fee schedule. This is the same, or this format is the same format that we have used for a few years. So this is your annual fee schedule, and this is for 2020. If you look at those fees, those fees are consistent which was with what was included on the 2020 plan assessment increase marketing material. Okay, so this is the fee schedule. The marketing material talked about making a commitment of three years, and there was a little bit of confusion because the first vote ended in November, and we were always talking about that it would last for three years because on the first vote for the assessment increase, it was going to kick in on January 1. On the second vote, it kicked, which passed, it's kicking in on March 1. And some people continue to assume that it would be for three years. Even though, but the marketing material said it would carry through to the end of 2020. Two months difference. When all said and done, it probably makes sense to just go through February 28th of 2023, make it a full two years. That way, if anybody thought it would go through to that time frame, that's the safest route. So it's two different motions, and I want to make sure we were clear. One was on the amenity fee schedule, which was for 2020, and one is on the fee schedule that the board is committing to for a three-year period. The last point I want to make is there are a few fees, just a few, like Blowing Springs, 
uh, the campground that are not, that were never included on the 2020 plan, the assessment increase schedule. Okay? The three year commitment does not apply to those. Okay? And you'll see on the bottom of page 120, I specifically call out that note because I want to make sure we were very clear. So next year at this time, if we decide to increase camping fees, that's allowed. But we can't increase golf fees and so forth because that's committed for three years. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so we're asking for two separate motions and one motion to approve the amenity fee schedule as, it, as you have it here. Is there a motion? Okay, David, I make a motion to adopt the revised 2020 amenity fee schedule. And then there a second? Second. Jim seconds. Ruth has stipulated for me to vote yes on this, so I'll call for a vote at this time. All in favor? Any opposed? Unopposed. I would ask for a motion to keep this fee schedule in place until February 28, 2023. Is there a motion to do that? No. Mary? Mary makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Terry Barron? Okay. Any further discussion on that? Just a comment. I, of course, I'm in favor of it, but we're talking three boards ahead of this board. And uh, I, I like the idea for it, but it's going to be hard to pin three future boards ahead of us to this, this uh, agreement. Okay, Ruth says I should vote yes. All in favor? 9 0. I see no opposition. That is approved. Okay, and next is the Blowing Springs Connector, the next item. We have a PowerPoint presentation on that. All right, we got, got both. Fantastic. All right, uh, so the Blowing Springs, Blowing Springs Connector Agreement concept developed in three miles, it's actually 2.9 miles. Uh, connector that will service many of the east side residents, is for, for elementary, could potentially ride their bike safely to school, uh, would be possible to ride from Metfield Park all the way down to Fayetteville, about 40 miles on a 10 foot wide concrete path. Okay, a little background. I wanna make sure everybody kinda of gets a historical perspective on the connector. So this corridor, this connector was uh, talked about in the early 2000s. Um, next one. We were actually contacted by a former chair of the Recreation Committee and uh, they were pointing out that over 10 years ago, this specific connector was being talked about by the Recreation Committee. Uh, next, uh, first, uh, the, it first was on the BB Trail Master Plan, showed this trail in 2010. Uh, the POA sponsored a meeting held on this, in December uh, 2013 to see input regarding the trails. If you remember that old Village, village Voice pamphlet that would be sent out, it was included in that. Also in, uh, okay, the regional walk bike plan was adopted by City Council in an open session in 2014. Uh, the POA held a uh, sponsor, sponsored a meeting in June of 2014 that was open to the public. Once again, that was covered in the Village Voice uh, that was sent out to every property owner. Uh, in uh, March of 2015, another meeting was held that also was went sent out to all property owners in the Village Voice, uh, and it was an open meeting. Uh, the proposed connector included was included in an article in March of 2016 that was also sent out uh, to every property owner. That was in the magazine. It was shortly lived. The name was called UR. And now it's called Inside Bellavis, and you get that every month. Uh, the 
but that article was featured there. And then uh, there was community input meeting at Cooper Elementary uh, in March of last year. And then the city of Bella Vista approved the agreement in January of 2020. So just to give you a little perspective, when a agreement, when the agreement, when a license agreement is signed, it has to be approved by the city and by the POA because we're partnering together. And all those meetings are open to the public. So here's a view of the uh, Blowing Springs connector. And you'll see down at the bottom left-hand corner, uh, that is where Blowing Springs Park is. And you go all the way up, and it goes up Houston, and then does a quick butt hook at the top, and uh, follows Commonwealth, and gets to Metfield Park. So this is the uh, plan that was included. This actual uh, map was in featured in that uh, uh, 2016 article. All right, challenges. Okay, so at the March meeting, uh, overall a very positive response at that March meeting, uh, but there was a couple concerns. The first one was drainage. And they actually went through and they did a tremendous amount of work on drainage. We actually met with some of the engineers earlier today, and there was one area where the culvert, where there was, they didn't install a pipe. So they had a culvert and then it just kind of ended and there's no pipe to drain it out. They're actually gonna fix that, so this will improve drainage in that area. Uh, they moved the connector further away from the road. A lot of people were concerned uh, about uh, the rate of speed of cars in that area. Uh, next thing is, a number of property owners were concerned about the number of, uh, of crossings. In the original plans, uh, in a couple areas, they had the, uh, the connector crossing, and then just a couple, you know, a, a few yards down, they had the soft surface crossing. You know, right on the same road, you know, right next to each other. It didn't, didn't make sense, so they could find those. Also, they wanted to make sure there was as much accessibility as possible. Uh, so all these, all the, the entire 2.9 miles is AASHTO compliant. I'm not an engineer, uh, but uh, they, we uh, spoke with their engineers earlier today, so it's fully AASHTO compliant. There is a 200-foot section of the connector. It's up at the corner of Houston and Commonwealth, where it goes, where it pops up pretty steep at the very end. Uh, it is above a 5% grade, but below an 8.34% grade, and that's an important. One. So what I was told this morning, and I didn't realize this, is so if you go into a ramp into a building, those typically are at 8.33% grade. So that'll give you an idea of what that grade is like. So it pops up, but it's 200 feet. But even with that 200 foot section, the engineers told us it's still fully ashed out of line. And, it, and you've got to keep in mind that you want to have it consistent with the road because you don't want the trail, the connector higher or lower than the road. Uh, so. All right, details. Uh, connects Blown Springs Park all the way up to Metfield, 2.9 miles. Uh, long, 10 foot wide. Uh, most of the connector is uh, path is on Houston, uh, with a buffer of approximately 10 plus feet. Uh, the blowing Springs connector will connect with the Razorback Greenway. Uh, if approved, the estimated completion is approximately in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, no added maintenance costs. So one, that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. So when the board approved the back 40, it, one of the issues that came with that was the $35,000 to maintain the back 40. And when the uh, when Little Sugar, the central section was approved, $35,000 in maintenance was approved for that to maintain those. This does not come with it, it's concrete. Um, now the city will still have to maintain the roadside. They'll still have to mow, but they won't have to mow that 10 foot strip. Okay, in your board packet, it talks about landings. And at one point, we thought this would be a workable idea in that 200 foot section having landings. Uh, but as we spoke with the engineers today, they actually said it would make it worse because if you have a slope, and I'm going to try and describe this, and hopefully I do a decent job. If you have a slope that's 8.33%, and if you create a landing, then to catch back up, you have to have more than an 8.33. So they actually having a landing will actually make the situation worse. I wasn't aware of that when I wrote the, when I wrote the 
memo. So when you're reading the memo, forgive me. Okay, an amendment. So a couple years ago, the state amended code to, to cl clarify class one, class two, and class three e-bikes. Okay, electronic bikes. And if you've ever seen them, you can see, you know, they, they have a little bit thicker frame and they're much heavier. Um, but it's getting to a point where it's harder and harder to actually tell if it's a bike or an e-bike. Um, but with this code change, so what we're recommending is that at the same time that the board, assuming they want to do this, approves the blowing screech connector, they also uh, approve this amendment, which then allows class one e-bikes on the connector. And a class one e-bike is must be pedal assisted and the assistance stops at 20 miles per hour. Class two and class three bikes, e-bikes can go faster or you don't have to have pedal assistance at all. Right? Uh, because class two, uh, no pedal assistance at all and the assistance stops at 20 miles an hour. In class three, it stops at 28, 26, 28 miles an hour, but those are not allowed, would not be allowed on the blowing springs connector. And this is on page 123 of your board packet. First thing we need is a motion to accept this, approve it. I make a motion to approve the proposed limited terminable <coughs> license agreement to the Blowing Springs Connector. Is there a second? Mary? Mary will second. Okay. Is there a discussion on this? Anybody have a statement? Yeah. I, I do. I, uh, I hate to say this, but this is kind of my swan song in my active life in Bella Vista since 1974. And uh, I was uh, part of the design of 660 miles of streets in Bella Vista. And we always got uh, complaints from the retirement magazines that we had no sidewalks. We, Right now, with 660 miles of streets, we have a half mile of four foot sidewalk right below us in this new subdivision. And that's it. And when I moved here, I always envisioned the uh, Houston Manchester reach because it's about the most general reach of its distance in the entire Bella Vista community because of our terrain. And uh, today we saw some. Uh, real detailed design and I absolutely applaud the uh, EDG, the design and engineering firm, and they answered any of many, all of my questions, they were all the board, but they answered all of mine. And uh, regarding your comments from the open forum, the stretch along Houston near Metfield or near Melanie and Merritt where you are it tend to be, it tends, the right way tends to be closer to Houston Road, which is kind of away from your tree line. So a specific comment to the open forum, but um, I hate to, I, I can't act like a city councilman here because I've never, personally, I've never been more enthusiastic about a project. In 46 years I've lived here, I just think it's a no-brainer. And I don't mind if others disagree, but I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful. And I, I would like to, if we pass it, I'd like to leave the delegation uh, along uh, from Metfield Park to Kessler Mountain in Fayetteville with a few stopovers and some bars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that'd be some 40 miles. And I, I hope it's approved, but if not, I understand that too. So anyway, that's it. Any other comments? Yeah, Jerry. I, I need to take a little bit different view from uh, what Jim has just said. And first of all, I want, I want to say I, I want to thank all the people that have sent us 
emails, all the comments over the time period that, that people have given with pro con or something else. But I'm, I'm a little bit torn overall because my entire life I've built upon credibility and integrity. I have to end up doing one of two things. One, making a motion to amend it, uh, and the amendment would be to force it to be ADA compliant. Ashto is good. Uh, yes, all the trails have been, uh, at least I'm told they're all built to that standard. I'm concerned about, we have basically within Bella Vista, about a third of new families with children. About a third that are retired and then another third somewhere in between. Still not retired, but yet they're not young families. But in particular, for small kids, I mean, the route is touted to be a safe route to school. Okay. And yes, they plan to build it to Ashton. But also, they claim that the current trails have been built to that standard, including Branchwood. Now, if you've been on Branchwood, you can see how high that slope is. Okay, I do go out and measure it, but more than 5%. The 200 feet that is above is 0.34%. It, it, pretty steep. it doesn't appear that the road is that steep, but I think there are some other options that haven't been looked at. Uh, basically, I just got the plans yesterday. Uh, I did make a mistake in this morning's meeting that we had about it, and then it said there was a 8% down in the Balloon Springs area. That statement is incorrect. I, I, I gave you other excuses except my eyes saw eight rather than something you know what it should be. I apologize for that. But the eight percent is either on, on a terminus, either going down or coming up. And you've got another section that goes on over to Metfield. I believe it's very possible. Cost a little more to build a connector trail coming off the bottom of that somewhere through uh, some properties. It may impact other people. We just haven't been enough time yet to, to really look at these things. You know, I, I find it difficult that it was clear back to the early 2000s. It was a big push in 2010. I don't understand why it wasn't built prior to the mountain bike crisis. So I, I'm just, I'm torn with it because I know it's, it's something that's needed, it's necessary, and a lot of people want it, but I'm just afraid that they have a mental picture uh, that's going to be a nice gentle slope all the way down. Myself, I would have a problem climbing that 200 feet at 8 and 30 percent without some way of getting off the trails, stopping, resting, and so on through there. I'm, I'm scared that a small child, um, say a first, second grader, uh, takes their bicycle, start from the top. Can't stop. We've been going through a lot of things for all. Um, now, planning to reopen Birchdale, uh, but have to do it in waves. Why? Because they're afraid people in golf carts are going to crash. Why do we then need to 
sacrifice of our kids and our members. And the trail of them. Kin, I really use their minds and their abilities in this day and age. There's really nothing that can, can't be done. That's why I need to put a note to it. I don't know why. Maybe the first thing that I'll try uh, is to offer an amendment to it, to clear up the section that's in the agreement that says it must be applicable and they'll take off the bonds. Don't define applicable. I'll leave that up to the engineer or to someone else. In this case, I fully believe that applicable means ADA. So I will make that motion for the agreement. And to, uh, if I may, if I may comment, I, I respect Jerry's comments, and uh, I do disagree regarding the uh, design gradients because of the terrain in Bella Vista and much of the existing 50 miles of the Razorback Greenway reaching south and west of Fayetteville. Extensions through Rogers, Bentonville, Fayetteville, because of the similar terrain, much of the gradients for long reaches are more than uh, a 10% gradient. Uh, but it does tend to accommodate uh, bikers and wheel type vehicles. I think I had the four. No, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I thought you were complete. No, I was making a motion to amend the, the original motion to clear up the phrase in there applicable and make it ADA compliant. Okay, that's my turn. turn. It's my turn because there was no motion yet. Okay. I had not made a motion. I have to discuss it. Gary made a motion to amend. Is there a second? <coughs> Hearing none, we will move on. Are there any other comments on the original motion? Did I make a motion? I apologize. I got to rambling. Yeah, you made it a really good motion. If I did, a second. Move, move if I did I'm sorry, Jerry. I apologize. I, I got to rambling and I forgot about my motion. Yeah. Jerry's motion dies from my second. Um, yeah, I want to recognize also that uh, there's a lot of members who want the trail, um, but there's also members who are very concerned about it. And my job is to listen to both sides, consider the governing documents that ask questions and get answers. Um, I just want to reiterate that this, this, this concrete trail is, in fact, a trail. Uh, it's not a path, it's not a connector, it's not a greenway, it's, it's a trail. Uh, the PRA already defines the rest of our concrete trails as trails. The CFA bill defines trails as including concrete surfaces, and of course there's the recreational use statute that talks about trails. Um, I would agree with uh, Jerry about the ADA compliance and believe that there's a certain perception. You know, we did receive a lot of emails in support of it, and they were very interesting. Uh, appreciate everybody's opinions. Um, and But there seems to be this impression that it will be a very easy stroll in the park. But um, if you have not walked Branch Wood, uh, you may want to do that and, and then consider whether we or not we should be ADA compliant. Um, I have other concerns, liability, the proximity to Brittany Golf Course. I would still like to see a study done, not just on the ADA compliance issue, but on moving the trail to that eastern side of Houston. Um, I think that that would solve lots of problems, including perhaps even this uh, ADA question. The, the other side may be easier to manipulate. Um, on the maintenance question, you know, it says in there that we're supposed to maintain it. 
And I'm not sure what that exactly means, except I do know that we agreed in the 2020 plan that the POA would not maintain the trail. It'll be different. Going to Springs will be different. There'll be uh, sod that isn't there, apparently. Um, we're looking to add parts south of Blowing Springs as well as north out of Blowing Springs. So it's not as if we're just still maintaining Blowing Springs, but additional uh, acreage. Um, and the, so speaking of that, the parcels go south of Blowing Springs, but it's the plans for the trail are actually just start in Blowing Springs. So it seems to me we either need to be told exactly what that means, why are we including those parcels to the south, or we just need to eliminate them. They don't make sense why they're in there to me. Uh, up at the corner where that button hook Tom referenced at Houston and Commonwealth, there's a linking parcel um, that does not appear part of the list of the parcels. And it looks like it is a right of way, but there's other right of ways that are listed that uh, I don't understand why that particular one is not. So it seems as though we're trying to build something that we don't have a permit for. Uh, the other issue, of course, is compensation. We're being asked to license hundreds of trails or hundreds of acres again uh, for zero compensation or correct, sorry, $10 25 years um, and you can do research I think people have that uh, uh, other parts of this trail have been uh, subject to eminent domain where the uh, landholder is compensated um, other issues are uh, you know there's one section one there's no actual guarantee that the thing will be built um, section 13, you know, it goes through our popular Blowing Springs and Brittany, but we are forbidden to restrict usage. For example, if someone's getting married in Blowing Springs and they have a huge uh, uh, wedding going on, we can't restrict the use of our property for that. So I think, you know, the ADA compliance is certainly a huge issue, but in my opinion, there's just so much more. And uh, I know Jerry made a motion. Uh, it was not seconded. What I would do is make a motion to postpone indefinitely this proposal until all questions and concerns are fully answered. The motion, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a, a, a motion to table. Any discussion on that? Are we allowed to? You are allowed to discuss the table. Yes, I would like to at first, um, in response to what Steve has said, uh, it's unfortunate that you were unable to attend the engineer meeting this morning. Many of these items were at rest to the satisfaction of the board members there, uh, with the exception of Jerry's concerns about ADA. We feel comfortable going forward. Uh, we feel that it's time to move the project along. Your concerns have been noted, and it's not the first time that we've heard of them. But any other discussion on the motion to table? Okay, I call for a vote. All those in favor of tabling this motion?
apply some signature. Yes. Yes. I 100% want to pass this. I really do. This connector, the way the community has reached out, and they know they want this. We know they want this. And I think it's a great addition to our community. But my job is to approve this licensing agreement. And in this licensing agreement, it does not say zero funds will be used from our members for this. It promises that the assessment passing no funds will be used. I know we're stating it. We've said it a hundred times. There's no additional maintenance. My fear is that this is a license agreement for 25 years. And it does not specifically say in the agreement that we will not spend any additional funds. If there's a natural disaster, which we saw happen last year with a windstorm and trees were knocked down and concrete was destroyed and the POA is responsible for replacing it. This is our land. Even in the license agreement, I feel it should specifically state that if that concrete is damaged, that is the responsibility of the city to maintain and not us. So that is my only opposition to this. Again, I really want it to pass, but I cannot approve an agreement that doesn't specifically state our financial responsibility. And uh, Doug, help me out here. I, uh, I, I basically tend to agree that because we pledged that in the 2020 plan, and we pledged that in this, that we would not expend any more money for whether it's trails or whether this is a pathway until 2023. We didn't say 25 years, but I don't, is it possible with the city's accord to throw an amendment in there that we will not uh, maintain this, this parcel till 2023, or till March of 2023 with our extension? Is that yeah, reasonable? We could do an amendment, but it would be an amendment to this original that the city is ready to do that, yes. And as we talked with the designers today, um, a good stretch of the 2.9 miles will be within the 80-foot uh, right-of-way of Houston Road, and also some of it will be within the 60-foot right-of-way of, of uh, Manchester Drive, especially as you get closer to Commonwealth because the corridor gets tighter and the grades get tougher. And uh, we realize that the city maintenance of their 80-foot right-of-way occurs at least twice a year in a brush hobby capacity. So I, I tend to uh, agree with her comment regarding the lease itself, that if we can impose that with the city until our pledge of the 2020 uh, fee schedule and the 2020 plan because we did state it in that we wouldn't spend any more than what we've already obligated on whether this is a trail or a paved pathway from a definition standpoint.
wouldn't be any additional maintenance in that area because it's all brush. And if it's all brush, we have a trail through it. But anyway, I'm, I'm yeah. along the two street right Now, in Boeing Springs Park, we've got explanation from Joan and her rec committee that they maintain all of, all of the Boeing Springs Park anyway. As I looked at the engineering documents, it does connect to the end right there at Boeing Springs. It, it goes right from there. It's right by Park Toronto. And it starts right there and it's on the east. So, it looked to me like it was definitely Are there any other comments? Okay, we're going to call a vote on that. One, one more comment. Sorry. Uh, understanding the concerns about maintenance. Jimmy has them, Tia has them, we all have them. We don't have that. Can we amend this motion to say that we will pass this limited, whatever we want to call this thing, licensing? With the exception that we will have an amendment to this license that says we will be not, we won't be responsible for any maintenance, so that we can get these people started until a, until a date, until whatever the date is, March of 2023, yeah. because that's you know things can change in that time. Can we pass it with that exception? Can we make an amendment to that motion? You, you could do that and be contingent upon the city passing that. You would have that. that we'd, have to go, we'd have to go back to the city to get them to agree yes. to an amendment to this contract. Mm -hmm. that would stay there. Just like you're doing with the ELEX. There's, there's, uh, that way we can go forward with this. It's the same thing as the ELEX. We can go forward with this. Would we have to re vote again in like a month? I, I, I think what you're asking is do we attach to this motion or do we make it separate? motion like we have with the e-bucks. After we vote on this, if it's approved, we will be voting on the limiting to e-bike class one, which is a separate. So with the what you're asking, and it sounds like a lot of people would like to talk about it, it would be an amendment that we would do at a later date and then ask the city to that. It will be an amendment, an amendment that would be required at a later date, otherwise we this would be an amendment that would be required, required at a later date, otherwise we don't approve this. We will go through with this, get that started, and then move on to the e-bikes, and then get Because I know there's going to have to be some specific words. Just like we've done it, yeah. 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 Just like we've drafted an amendment for e-bikes, we would do the same thing for... Uh, I think it's something that we would want to let legal work on for a little bit before we have a vote, vote on it and get some conversation with the city also. Doug, is that possible we could have that with for ready for next month's board meeting? Yes. Is that anything in response to the city with with that clarification or rider? Yeah, I, I think that's entirely possible and, and I think it's quite likely that we'll be talking about it. So okay, with that said I call for a vote on the motion to approve the proposed limited terminal license agreement to the Boeing Springs Connector. Ruth has said she votes yes strongly. I call for a vote. All those in favor? Six, seven, those opposed? Two. Okay, moving forward, the next item is the e bike provision. It's on uh, page 137 of your report packet. Good. Okay, is, uh, will somebody make that motion? Bikes 
to? In other words, is there a reason they weren't in there originally in 2018? What's the, what sort of a thinking planning behind this amendment? They, they definitely are new, or at least they're big, you're seeing them a lot more. They're a lot more common now than they have in the past. And uh, the state changed the code in 17, is that correct? 2017. Okay. So, and what, I was talking to the mayor about this, and what happens often is the state will change the state statute, and then the cities within the state will then have to make adjustments as a result of that. So they're actually, the city of Belle Vista is actually um, moving forward on making a change, and I provided that language uh, to the board that the city is actually working on. Uh, but to answer your question, it, it's you're seeing them a lot more often than, than you ten years ago. You never saw them. Now you see them pretty often. So is there is the so the state is basically reacting to their popularity and, and putting it into their code and we'll yeah. fall. Absolutely. Sure. Actually, I kind of started this thing. Uh, and the reason for it is the current agreements prohibit it. And, and we know what's happening. So let's legitimize it. And I myself, uh, if I want to get a B bike, I'll be able to find the 8% that fit the problem. <laughs> So that will help in that manner. One other comment I've got uh, in all of the agreements, these the ones that we're looking at today, are pretty much the same. And it combines everything, all the uses and so on, and the names of trails, the different things, to the trail. But yet the rest of the document is not consistent. I just have problems when things are not consistent going through. It seems like we should be able to do this by the third time and come back in the I guess I agree with a couple of Jerry's comments. Uh, I think the fact that uh, if we approve e bikes, It'll especially help the population in Bella Vista because of the terrain of uh, Bella Vista is as steep as some of the rest of the Razorback Greenway and other trails. And uh, I think it'll be helpful for the older population. And uh, so I agree with Jerry in that regard. Other comments? We call for a vote then to approve the motion. First Amendment to limit the term local license agreement, which has to do with appointment connector and e bikes. Ruth has said yes. All in favor? I see no opposition. Next is the flowing spring connector landing decision, which I we learned this morning that the uh, engineers are scary against landing because they think it makes it more dangerous, it makes certain areas steeper, as Tom referenced. Personally, I think that if a person can get two and a half miles, they'll be able to manage the last uh, 200 feet since that 200 feet is the same grade that we find on the ramps when you use them for ADA compliance. They're 8.33%. So, is there a motion? <laughs> the amendment as stated about landings. Hearing none, there is none. We move on to the trailheads, the back 40 of Little Sugar Creek, page 
page 143 of your fourth packet, uh, there are numerous trailheads on uh, the east side, the back 40, and uh, on the central section, Little Sugar. Uh, some of these uh, trailheads are not in, uh, not under control of the POA uh, or, or the city. They're actually, uh, for example, the community church and Assembly of God has, uh, they have trailheads. Uh, but uh, you can see on page 147, uh, is a list of all of the trailheads that are either uh, on POA property or the one that is on city property, would be on city property at the streets department. And this uh, agreement would solidify those trailhead locations. Okay, now as, as you look at the parcel numbers, those parcels in many cases contain a lot of acres. And we're not talking about using all the acres for parking. It's a very specific area that as you go through, and you'll see the diagrams, the pictures marked in red, giving you the idea of the area where uh, where these are going to be. So <clears throat> that does, does the agreement state that, that it's limited to those red areas? It does, yes. Trailhead locations are further identified and limited to those areas outlined in red for those parcels represented by the pictures in this video. Okay, it's one forty three. So we need to find places for these people to park so they don't park on the street. Okay. I have some problems on the trailheads. For one, the one in Lloyd Springs, they're already in use. They're already uh, maxed out many times. Now we're going to throw another use in there on top of it uh, with the, uh, the connector. has uh, reserved the entire park. We can't keep out the people using it. Whatever we end up calling it, the green lake connector, whatever. Um, we can't prohibit anybody from going through there. We get somebody that paid the whole park. So I think those are problem areas. Um, another one uh, is that uh, Tweety Bird. In some ways, I think it's a very good place to have it. But it sits down in a hole. Uh, there are massive drains uh, coming through under the road that wash down the part of the road and part of everything else. Uh, so I, I foresee that the next really heavy downpour wash that parking lot clear out. Okay. And since this is a separate motion and a separate deal, is it covered under the no maintenance for POA or is it not? Question that hasn't been answered. So there's a, I'm not sure where they're at in uh, the processes building and constructing. Many of these trailheads have already started constructing or we have prepared them. And I'm curious whether the surface, if they're at an end point for one of these parking areas, is that surface the correct surface to meet city codes and ACC? I mean, the, the Tweed Bird one appears to be the finished product. Other than final grading of it, because I've already put the upper down. So I don't, I don't know if I'm putting there. It's a question that's out there. The other question I have is that we're not using all of the parcel. Uh, and anything seems to follow the parcel down. Just, 
Det bother me a whole lot the way they are. We have connectors to the turtle. Those are all questions. Regarding the maintenance uh, for the trailhead that are on the back 40, they would fall under the $35,000 that is already committed on the three for the back 40, they would be on additional maintenance fees. And for this area in the central section, uh, the same with the $35,000 that's already been committed, so there would be no additional funds to maintain those trails, those trailheads. Uh, also, uh, they are required, and they, they have consistently done this, uh, required to meet all city standards and get all city permits. Uh, I know earlier you, uh, Jerry, you were at the meeting this morning, you asked me for, uh, to show you the permits for the bridge that is going over Little Sugar, and I have it on my desktop, and I'll be able to share that with you tomorrow. They have all the permits. Okay, do we have a motion to approve this? We need a motion first to continue this. <coughs> to discuss. So, will somebody take a motion to approve the trail pass? I, I move that we approve the uh, trail heads as listed in, in Exhibit A, uh, recognizing that many of them are already built. And the fact that we now, in Exhibit A, we've excluded the wonderful charity from both the uh, Community Church and the Assembly of God Church in, in an agreement because it doesn't affect our methods. Uh, I would like to, if accepted, I would like to thank those two churches as well for offering trailheads where the proposed or existing trails are already located. Is there a second to the most? Second. Do you have a second? Now we can have a discussion. Um, so, for example, the parcel is under consideration when there's the red part of the parcel. Is the assumption that the whole red part is going to be used as the trailhead? That, or will there be additional facilities built? Or what's I don't know how large the parking lot is. The, the assumption, be. the assumption that it will be someplace within that sort of that red line. It's very unlikely that it would be as large as those are. Right. They will situate the trailhead somewhere when else. when they get there. As a lot of the trails are built, you know, they can change a little bit as they run into terrain and whatnot. And I would assume that the parking lots are also subject to what we did change, but it will be within those boundaries. And then, um, you know, back when we talked about building an archery range over there on our McNelly property, I believe the city informed us that the parking lot itself had to be concrete or asphalt. So I'm going to uh, assume or believe, unless told otherwise, um, and I think the ones on the back 40 are already concrete. I think the one at Bear Hollow is concrete. Or will all of these also be concrete? Or asphalt. Or asphalt. So the requirement is where there's any, so I'm going to use um, uh, the uh, gun range as an example. That, at the gun range, the parking lot is by and large gravel, dirt. Uh, but there is a section for handicap parking that is asphalt or, or concrete. Uh, and that parking lot is to code. Uh, and that, that handicap spot was actually added about a year to two years ago. So uh, you could say prior to the addition of that, it was not to code. <coughs> I, think that, I don't think that's in the city. I think these are all in the city, so I'm assuming that it'll be a different I'm just situation. Using no, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. You know, where they have to have handicap parking, they'll have to have. Um, but you, you'll see most trailheads are gravel. I think in all the ones on the back 40, I haven't visited them all. 
But in any event, uh, what I'd like to suggest is that they do be made of asphalt and concrete. Uh, since I believe, like I said, it was the city who informed us they had to be that way anyway. So we want to be consistent. Um, and then if they are asphalt and concrete, perhaps we could strike a number of them and then put up donation boxes uh, to help offset some of our ongoing costs for these things. Uh, will there be additional facilities such as porta potties or anything like that constructed? Has there been any discussion? Water? Uh, they have installed water on some of the back 40 mm -hmm. trailheads or at least one, one trailhead. No. Several. Uh, but uh, I have not heard of uh, any plans one way or the other uh, for Little Sugar. I mean, is that seems like a good idea. Where we can get water in and well, reasonably, they've done that. Uh, <laughs> Drake, how many port body, how many locations have port bodies? Sorry. How many locations on the back 40 have port bodies? Do you know? Any of them? Two. Definitely two, though. Um, three. Two. At least three, though some have uh, permanent facilities where they're in parking lots. Uh, Metfield, for example. For example, yeah, the, yeah. the Metfield parking lot has bathroom facilities through the golf course. Right, I don't mean to put a train on the spot or anything, but um, I don't know if we talk about, about it. And, what we're actually looking at with these trailheads. Jerry, that is one of my questions is what is included within the trailhead. And the second one is is there plans to build with any dog um, according to what it should be for the number of parking spots. Well that's one that we have not been talking about meeting city code. ACC is also on the ballot, so I don't think we need ACC as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so all the parking lots, that, you know, uh, some of these questions are very specific and I don't have all the answers and I'm not going to, uh, not going to be able to answer every question. Every parking lot will be built to city, state, federal standards. Uh, they do not stray from those standards in any way. Standards. I don't know what those standards are. I can just tell you that they will build them to the standards. So. Yeah. They're kind of my same questions, but please don't shoot me down with the stupid questions. But with this agreement being, if, if this passed, does the city have the ability to build a snapshot or put porta potties wherever they want? Can they do anything other than build a gravel or asphalt or concrete trailhead? No, they'd have to come to us and to expand the scope of any of which, which are talking about the trails. The expansion of the scope, which... Thank you. Seeing no other comments, I call for a vote. All those in favor of the trailhead motion. Opposed? Two. Seven favor, two opposed. David, uh, we're pretty much done with item XII. Um, yes. I'd just like to make a personal comment. Um, we've been dealing with uh, soft trails, and now our first segment of uh, our trails that we did approve, we got a couple amendments within a month, but uh, I don't stand for anybody other than myself, but I absolutely applaud the Walton Family Foundation for their uh, money and their reach. And we found out today that this one, this 2.9 miles is paid solely from funds from the Walton Foundation, Family Foundation. Some of the existing 50 miles has been paid by uh, federal funds, the multimodal transportation funds, 
and the Long Foundation. And I, I personally want to thank the Long Foundation. I don't think we've ever felt the warrant to thank them for uh, roughly $8 million of improvements, trails, and blue science that they've helped us with uh, in the past five years. So that's just my personal comment. I would echo that sentiment. We, we seem to be pick, 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 pick. We need to stop and, and thank these people for the wonderful amenities and improvements that they've made in our community and make life better for all of us. So I definitely, that's kind of what I thank you. Next. Uh, next up on your agenda, on page 163 of your board packet, is the second reading of uh, modification of policy 1.00, which will incorporate uh, the word return and the definition for an activity card with the uh, passage of the assessment increase. Uh, right now, we only have photo ID cards. We're changing the name to activity card. This is really kind of a stopgap measure. Uh, the uh, Rules and Regulations Committee is making is working on additional changes that need to go into effect as a result of the assessment increase being passed. Uh, but this is uh, this will be the second of two required readings to pass to uh, modify policy 1.00. The second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll David, I'll make a motion to approve the proposed changes to policy 1.00, which will incorporate the term activity card into our policies. This is the second of two required readings. Thank you, David. Second. Second from C. I don't expect any discussion. So we'll vote. All in favor? Thank you. 9 0. Moving on, we will now address proposed new. Wait, vote regulations or in general voting regulations. This is the last PowerPoint of the day, I'm happy to say. And I think you're happy to say too. Okay. Goals to develop a regulation to control the use of wake votes on POA lakes. Uh, second one, to balance the interests of varying people, the lakefront owners and boat owners, wake boat owners, and ensure that regulation is both reasonable and enforceable. Uh, so background, uh, the Lakes Committee received a number of complaints regarding wake boats and the, the wake that was being caused by these boats, and they started investigating this approximately two years ago. Uh, they put a tremendous amount of research into it and they ended up developing regula uh, recommendations that were issued to the Rules and Regulations Committee. The committee, the Rules and Regulations Committee, then took those recommendations and codified them into policy, or actually, I'm sorry, into a regulation uh, that would be incorporated into our overall voting regulation. Uh, the Rules and Regulations Committee voted on those changes and approve them and you know, thus recommending them to the board of directors. <coughs> Proposed regulations. So fishing and pleasure boats, there would be no change. Uh, it would remain at 100 feet from the shoreline. For ski, water ski and tubing, it would be increased from 100 feet to 200 feet. And for wake boats, uh, it would go from 150 feet to 200 feet. Uh, now, in the regulation, and that's, that is included in your board packet, I don't know the, the, number, the page number off the top of my head, you'll see that we actually describe the, the, the activity, because it's, uh, a wake boat is just, it's not just a term that you say, okay, this is a wake boat. It's actually an activity taking on ballast or using other devices that create that weight. So we actually had to describe the action as opposed to the weight boats. 
So you'll see in the regulations, there's a very detailed description because we had to describe the action, not just label it weight quotes because, because of the technologies that's out there, it's not this hard and fast, this is a weight boat, this is not a weight boat. It's a lot more complicated than that. And you can have a weight boat that doesn't take on ballast and won't create an enlarged weight. But once it takes on ballast, then it creates an enlarged weight. So in the one sense, it's not a problem. In the other sense, it is a problem. So that's why we describe the action. Okay, next step. Assuming if, if the board were to approve it today, any change in regulation, sorry, let me back up. So <coughs> normally when a policy is changed, it takes two votes. For example, when the board was changing policy 1.00, they did the second vote, then it goes into effect. During the discussion, during the creation of this, there was uh, various times where we used the word policy and various times that we used the word regulation. Okay. Including myself, there was times that I used the word policy. A regulation technically only required one vote for the board, but the board decided because there was some confusion caused that they would require two votes. So if they vote on it tonight and if they approve it and send it forth, it will then go to an open session, the work session on March 19th, and then would be voted upon at the second time on the March 26th regular meeting. But I just want to clarify that you technically don't need that second vote for a regulation, but it's just required. But it's probably prudent because we wouldn't want anybody to get the impression that the board is racing through this regulation and not taking the free vote. Okay. Reevaluation. The Lakes Committee, this is, not, this is not the first step that the Lakes Committee has taken. This is actually the second step. Last year, they, they made the recommendation to take weight quotes from 100 feet to 150 feet. This then goes to 200 feet. So the, the Lakes Committee has clearly stated that they want to reevaluate and potentially change it down the road, but they want to see how it goes this time and then make potential future changes. So they don't want anybody to get the impression that this is the end of uh, the effort. Uh, now, the board may stipulate further uh, research uh, for the committee, for the Lakes Committee, uh, potentially setting up neighborhood watch style. Uh, this would be very helpful. All too often, the Lake Rangers will receive a complaint and the, and the property owner will say, two weeks ago, a wake boat did this. Well, we can't do anything about it. It was two weeks ago, unless you can tell me who owned that wake boat, the date and time. So if we were to set up a neighborhood watch, and Jerry brought, Jerry Hover uh, came up with this idea. If we created a neighborhood watch where we can then contact the lake rangers immediately and go educate that property owner that's using that boat incorrectly. Also monthly reporting to make sure that we're staying on top of this. The proposed, well at this point, the approved, the, the approved revised budget for 2020 includes sufficient funds for Lake Rangers. Okay. Uh, we wanted to make sure with this, we anticipated that this new regulation would go through, this, uh, the way the regulation would go through. We wanted to make sure we included in the budget a sufficient number of Rangers. Um, the Lakes Committee has additional recommendations that are not regulations. For example, when you uh, register a weight boat, we're going to ask you to identify it. And you're going to have a different type of sticker, which will allow us to more clearly identify if that is a weight boat, that is a ski boat, and so forth. Recap, develop a regulation control the use of weight boats on POA lakes. I really want to emphasize this second one. This has been very challenging for the board and for the lakes committee where they have to balance the interests, at times conflicting interests, of property owners. And they're trying to strike that delicate balance between both parties. And ensure the uh, regulation is both reasonable and enforceable. 
So Rick Eccles and, Lakes, and the Rake, Lake Rangers were involved in this to make sure that we didn't develop a regulation that was not reasonable for the Lake Rangers to actually enforce. So we involved them in the process, thus making it enforceable. And that's the end of my presentation.
just for weight boats and that we would work on the rest of the overall boating regulation next month starting at the GM meeting and then going to the work session and so forth. Uh, so um, if you have concerns about houseboats or something of that nature, um, uh, Director Hope uh, over I think has a similar concerns and that's why he brought up that one. And Steve, just to clarify, the motion that I made is just, it specifically says develop the regulation of weight books. It's not about this entire document. It's just the addition of the weight book regulation. So which part of that is in this picture? So if you uh, look at uh, the one side where uh, you see fishing and boating and water sports, on the left hand side, number three. So it will go from general regulation all the way down, not to include number seven. So three, four, five, and six are, are direct copies of the uh, regulation that the rules and regulations committee put together. Um, and I'd also like to point out that this regulation sheet other than the changes for wake boats was what we've had in place since last year. I think last year at this time, the uh, Lakes Committee made some recommendations on changes. So in other words, uh, if, if you had some challenges, it was there last year. Not not saying that it shouldn't be changed, but it was there last year also. The house boat was? Yes. Even though it violates policy? So, how, how, what do you mean it violates policy? Because in policy, it prohibits uh, Jet skis and, and uh, permanently enclosed kitchens and bathrooms and sleeping quarters. I think it prohibits the use of those, but this this iteration has been the same for at least seven years, and so and probably much much before that. But like like Tom said, that you know, it needs, right to be it needs to be addressed and, and changed. We can certainly. All right, so going back to the uh, motion, it's under the voting rules and regulations, number which, number six? Number three, four, five, and six. Pertaining to the issue of wakes and wake votes. Any other comments? I'll call the motion then. Ruth said, vote oh, yes. All in favor of the regulation? Seven. All opposed? One opposed? One abstention. Okay. Uh, Mary, please raise Mary. your hand on the upset abstention. Please raise your hand on the upset. Thank you very much. Mary abstains. Uh, next up on your board packet is page 171. At the last community involvement committee, uh, there was discussion uh, about uh, how over the last year to two years, the committee has struggled uh, to get volunteers. Uh, the POA has advertised multiple times in multiple ways to try and get additional uh, volunteers. Unfortunately, uh, they, we have been unsuccessful in getting additional volunteers. So the committee started discussing uh, whether it made sense to disband uh, the, the committee. Now, one thing uh, on the bottom of page 171, you'll see the, the lasting legacy. Two of the things that they created most recently and that are active uh, are the charity cook drive, which was a huge success this last year. Uh, and the uh, fireflies and tailgates. And so management has stated that we would take, if the committee gets disbanded, management will take over the operation. So those two value events would continue. Also, uh, the precursor for the community involvement committee was the Young Residents Committee. And they were instrumental in the, in the decision to uh, renovate the playground equipment and the creation of the beach at, at uh, Lake Avalon. So, uh, uh, Bell Vista's in 
indebted to the efforts of the Young Residence Committee uh, and Community Involvement Committee. Uh, they've done a lot of great work over the last few years, and unfortunately, they've been unsuccessful in getting people to volunteer for this community committee. Let me, I'm sorry, one more thing. And we've spoken to each of the committee members uh, and offered uh, that uh, we do our best to place, if they want to continue to volunteer, uh, to place them on potentially the rec committee or something of that nature uh, to see if they would like to continue servicing, serving the community. I'm going to make a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion to disband the community involvement committee effective immediately. Further, the Rules and Regulation Committee is directed to prepare modifications to the governing documents to remove the committee from community involvement. Thank you. Second. Second. Take a vote for seconds. Any discussion? Jerry? I would like to make an amendment to the, the motion that we also include the super committee in the same process. It hasn't been. Is there a second to that amendment? Second, I would second it. Uh, could we put it in a separate amendment? Because it is a, a committee, existing committee, rather than attach it to disbanding this committee. Jerry, would you would you make that as a separate motion? Would you agree to that? Or would you rather stick with the amendment? Now, which is the best way to handle it? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're disbanding both of them? Or, I mean, that's the intent, right? That you would that you disband both of them, so I think it's perfectly... <coughs> okay, so a okay. perfect option to add it on your item. I'll second that. We have second. a motion to amend from Jerry over. We have a second of that motion to amend from Jim. Jerry, you have something to say? Mm -hmm. Just if the chair wants to make it separate, I'd be happy to make it separate. But we can handle it together. It, Doug is fine with it being together. Well, the only reason you would want, you can do it together, absolutely. Uh, the only reason you would potentially want to make it separate if, if a board member agrees to, wants to disband one but not disband the other. If the board, the board is in favor of disbanding both, that's totally fine, but a board member could want to just disband one and not the other. That's what the amendment does. That was your voting on That discussion on the, uh, the amendment. Is there anybody who would object to amend it? Okay, then we will vote on the amendment to add the super committee. All in favor? Nobody opposed. Just a comment. Uh, regarding the Community Involvement Committee and the uh, previous uh, Residence Committee. Again, uh, I personally thank them for their efforts in helping us spearhead the beach promotion and the playground uh, revisions. And uh, I, I think I saw informal evidence of a lot of that same group tonight in uh, emails that the board received regarding uh, support for them and their families and the fact that some of them work in town and they'll be able to ride to work. I think I saw evidence of some of that in the emails that the board received. A lot of the Metfield younger family residents. Is there any other discussion on the motion as amended? Call for a vote then. All in favor of disbanding the super committee and the community involvement committee and having rules and regulations and prepare the modifications for the board to get those out of the policies. All in favor? Nine to zero. If there's no other business before the board, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. David Welch will have made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I will read the announcements before we adjourn them, before I ask you to vote. Coffee and Questions is Tuesday, March 10th, 10 a.m. at the Metfield Clubhouse. That's for new members. If you know anybody have a new neighbor or something. 
Evans Mon. Board of Directors TM meeting Thursday, March 12th, 4 30 p.m. in boardroom at the Hunting Club. Meet the candidates tonight, Tuesday, March 17th, 6 p.m. Rear Hall, right here. Board of Directors work session Thursday, March 19th, 9 a.m. in boardroom at the Hunting Club. Board of Directors regular session Thursday, March 26th, 6 p.m. in boardroom at the Hunting Club. All in favor of adjourning?